Welcome to Techno Dad Life, and we're going to be installing Open Media Vault on a blinky, flashy Raspberry Pi that I found. Uh, also, we're going to be leaving links down below to that and to any of the software we mentioned in the video. And if you like this video, uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the other side. Right, so let's get started. So first thing we need to do is download Open Media Vault. And so we go to openmediavault.org and click on download. Click here for ISOs. We're gonna click on Raspberry Pi images and then click on the latest image and download that. Once you've done that, download Etcher. Etcher is what we're gonna use to burn our image to our card and so you can download whatever version you need here and then once you've downloaded that we're going to download one more program and we're going to download putty and so putty is so we can ssh into our computer if we need to and you can click on that here and next let's get started so once you have all those installed open etcher and install your sd card next select image click on raspberry pi and open and you can see here it already automatically found my SD card. We're going to click flash. Once that's finished, you can click close on that and pull out your SD card. So now we're going to install that into our Raspberry Pi. So once that's installed, we can go to our router and you can see right there is our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to copy that address and then log into our Raspberry Pi. So the username for Open Media Vault is admin. And the password is Open Media Vault. And then click login. And so now what we'll do is we'll just go down through all our settings and just correct everything as we go along. So we'll start here at the top with general settings. And so we're gonna change our timeout system. So if we put it to zero, then there is no timeout. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna click save. Web administrator password. Oh, first we have to click apply and yes. Next, we're going to change the web administrator password. And then click save. And if we look at the date and time, uh, the current date and time is correct for us. Oh, so the time zone is wrong for us. So we're going to go down to New York and then click save. Apply, yes. We're going to skip network notifications. Notifications is to notify us if something's going wrong. We're gonna click on power management and we don't have a power button on our case, but if you do, you can change that right here. And if you do, you can click save there. Next, we'll go to monitoring and we're going to enable that and click save. Uh, we're not going to do anything with the certificates or scheduled jobs, uh, but we will click on update manager. And you can see there's a bunch of files that need updating. So we're going to click all those. And here you can see there's a problem. It says we need to run dpkg config a uh, manually. So what we're gonna do is open up, or actually what we have to do first is close this. And that's gonna reload. And we're going to go down to SSH. And now in order to SSH into the machine to do that particular task, we actually have to permit root user. So permit root login. We're gonna click there. We're gonna click save. Apply, yes. And now when we go back to plug our update manager, we're gonna hit that upgrade again to get the same error because we need to copy that here. So we're gonna put that into a terminal. So now we're gonna open a putty terminal and I already had typed in my IP address. So there it is there, we're gonna click open. We're going to log in as root and the password is open media 
Alt, hit enter. And so it asks us to change the root password. So uh, why don't we do that now? So first we have to type in our original password, which is Open Media Vault. Hit enter. And then we type in our new password twice. Very good. And so now what we're going to do is type in app get update. Okay, and we're going to clear the screen. And now we're going to type in the DPKG. Hit enter. And so we're going to tab down to OK. And then type clear again. And next, what we're going to type is app get upgrade. Then I click yes to continue. So next, we're going to pick from, hit enter. Okay, so we'll type in no. So once that's done, you can close that window. And close that and reload. And we're going to go back to Update Manager. And now you can see all our packages have been updated. And we'll just check to see if there's any more. So next what we'll do is we're going to skip plugins for a second and go to OMV Extras. We're going to click on Docker and we're going to click Edit and enable that. Click Save, Apply, Yes. And now what we're going to do is click on Plugins. Uh, we're going to add in two things, Open Media Vault Shell in a Box. And then the other is all the way down at the bottom, that is Docker. And so click on those two and then Install and yes. Once that's done, click close and now it will reload again. And now if we scroll down, now we have two new entries. We have Docker and Shell in the Box. First we'll look at Shell in the Box and so this is a substitute basically for SSH. And so actually before we go there, so Basically, for it to work, you need SSH enabled, and it has to be set to port 22. If it's not enabled or set to port 22, it won't work. Uh, so let's go to Shell in the Box. So the first thing we're going to do is enable that and then save. Apply, yes. And now we're going to click on Web Clients, click on Advanced, and proceed. And now we have our Raspberry Pi login. Let's just type in root and our password. And there we can log into our Raspberry Pi. This is very convenient, much more convenient than SSH, much quicker too. Okay, so we're going to go back to Open Media Vault. And the last thing that we are going to enable is Docker. Then we're going to click Enable Plugin. Click Save. And so now we have our Docker up and we can start doing images. That will be in other tutorials. But now we're going to go back to storage. We're going to go to physical disks. So here you can see our two disks. So the top one here is our uh, SD card. The bottom is our SSD, which is our hard drive. So what we're going to do is click on that SSD and we're going to click edit first. And so if you have a normal, well, one thing about hard drives for Raspberry Pis, unless it's a SSD, it needs to be a powered hard drive. So if you have a powered hard drive, you're going to want to click some of these things, minimal power usage, minimal performance, and then spin down time. Uh, for me, I'm going to leave it disabled, but I would do that. And then if it's write cache enabled, click that. And we're going to click Save. 
click apply and then yes and next we're going to click wipe that drive and we're going to just do a quick wipe and when that's done click close and so next we're going to look at other things but I don't necessarily need them because we have a SSD but smart so smart is settings to keep track of the performance of your devices and to enable that just click enable and click save and apply and yes next click on devices and you can see there's our device there and so we're going to click edit activate smart and click save so now it will keep track of that device so let's click on information and see what appears and so basically it tells us about the device uh, serial number firmware Let's take a look at these other one attributes. And so it can tell us when it's failing or it has problems. You can see uh, it's a pre-fail, some old age there. We haven't done any tests. And then this is extended information there. We can schedule those tests here. Uh, we're not going to do that right now though. Next we're going to go to RAID. So if you have more than one hard drive attached to your device, you can click create. And since I only have one, it's not really possible. So we'll click cancel there. Next we'll click on file system and we're going to click create. Select the device and that's going to be our SSD. And so we're going to label that SSD and click OK. And yes, we really want to do that. Once that's done, click close. Uh, next we're going to click on, oh, you know, actually we're not. So next what we're going to do is click on our SSD again and click mount. Click apply and yes. So now our SSD is ready to use. You can see it's online and it's mounted. Next, we're going to click on at flash memory. And so this is actually enabled by default in the Raspberry Pi edition. So we don't really need to do anything here. Next, we're going to click on user. We're going to add a user. And so we're going to add user one and put in a password and click save apply and yes next we're going to click on shared folders we're going to add three shared folders the first one is app data our ssd and we're going to click on everyone then click save and add another folder this one we're going to call media ssd again everyone and we're going to click save and then our last folder is going to be called downloads and we're going to click SSD and everyone and click save. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to SMB, click on that. And so we're going to enable this. Basically, this will let Windows users browse the shares on this server. So we're going to click save, apply, yes. Now we're going to click on shares and add those shares that we just created. So first of all, add in app data we're going to make that public to guests allowed we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to enable permission inheritance and click save next we're going to add in our second folder which is our downloads folder again guests allowed and enable permission inheritance click save finally we're going to add in our last folder here which is our media folder guests allowed Enable permission inheritance, click save. Okay, now let's see if we can find those on our network. So we're gonna click on our Windows folder. We're in our network. There is our Raspberry Pi. If it doesn't show up the first time, make sure just click on the refresh button there. So we're gonna click, double click the Raspberry Pi. There's our three folders we just created. And so let's open one and let's try to create a folder. And yes, we can create a folder and we can delete it. So now we have a fully functioning Raspberry Pi. We have a user uh, shell in the box so we can uh, SSH into our box without opening a separate uh, program. And we have Windows shares and we have Docker. And now you're completely set up for any of the other tutorials that we do. So please make sure you like and 